All right, everyone. Sorry if I look like a corpse right now, but I saw this video. Let's let's watch it. We're only three months into 2024, and if there's one thing that's been proven true, it's that AAA gaming is dead. And smaller studios are still- Yeah, AAA gaming's been dead for a while, man. There's a lot of Fairweather fans out there that have that really got into the hobby over the past few years, and uh, this this industry was coasting off of them. I mean, during COVID, a lot of people who, uh, who never really cared that much about gaming really got into gaming. And, uh... Yeah, people just don't have time to do it anymore the way that they used to when they were all at home. Feeling the spotlight and stepping up, outdoing AAA companies in game design and Hell even divers. sales. I've got to play Helldivers, man. I saw so many videos of this game that just made me want to get involved, but I just I had other things going on. I was busy with WoW, busy with RuneScape. One of these days I'm going to get the Helldivers, though. Um, Hopefully it'll still Power be around. Maybe Helldivers Entrouded, 3. Helldivers 2, Ooh. Last Epoch. All of these are half the... I haven't played Last Epoch, uh, but I've heard that it's already sort of fallen off, that, that the content came. It's the problem with games nowadays, that people get into the meta of the game, and they just speed run to the end, and then people just get bored and, and, and get off the game, which is really, really unfortunate. The price of AAA games and are putting... It used to be when a game came out. I mean, you know, people played RuneScape back in the day for for a decade and, and never got to the end of it. It was such a long game. It was built in that it would be such a long grind. And I think that the the market for these games denotes that they are short because people need to be able to play them. You can't sell a game if you can't get to the end of it. So, I don't know, 60-hour grinds or so is probably about all that the main consumer is going to want. People want to be able to jump into a game, have a good time, and jump out. That's That seems to be the way the market's going currently, and AAA games are really moving towards that. The AAA games released this year, to shame. Suicide Squad, Dead on Arrival, developed by people who hate the fans. Skull and Bones, <laughs> Dead on Arrival, a yeah. supposed quadruple A game with facial animations and combat worse than- I haven't ever played an Assassin's Creed game. I've heard so many people tell me that I really should, but it just, it does not look fun or interesting to me. It took me until like a week ago to play GTA V, and it's actually a good game. I was shocked by the amount of stuff that you can do in that game. It was it was absolutely mind blowing. And I thought, oh man, this one's actually good. I should have played this way sooner. Now I'm looking at Red Dead, just like, man, that, that might actually be good too. Then the game that inspired it from a decade ago. Um, You're talking to a guy who has 4,000 hours in Maple Story and never played GTA V. I, I don't know if I'm the best person to talk about AAA gaming, but uh, I'm who 2, you got. A game that's ran out of server space to handle the mass amount of players and has become a cultural phenomenon. Wow. They Power filled up all the servers. With a massive all-time peak of... We only have one server, it doesn't matter, but Two still. million players and are making Game Freak and... Power World was really, really cool for a minute. I just think that the in-game content ended up looking kind of boring. The second that I got a gun in Power World, I, I thought, okay, I've done it. I've done what I needed to do. It's Pokemon, but with guns. I got the gun. We're good. Nintendo <laughs> gave up on like it. Back to WoW. Ones who are the indie studio. Am I the only person alive who would much rather play one game for 5,000 hours than play a bunch of games for 50 hours apiece? That's just the way my brain works. There's there's games like WoW, RuneScape, um, unfortunately Dead by Daylight, Final Fantasy XIV, uh, League. These kinds of games that I want to play for, for all of eternity. I want these games to come with me over my lifetime. I've been able to bring old school RuneScape with me all the way through my existence and now I just want to do that with all the games that I love. Nintendo. I don't think of a lot of people have a really hard time getting into something like an MMO because they think, "Oh man, this is going to take a thousand, two thousand, four thousand hours to play." And I just think, "Yeah, but you do that over a really long time. WoW's been around since 2005." Old School RuneScape's been around since 2002. These games are going to stick around for a long time, probably. So get into them now and continue to play them. You don't have to play it all at once. When you get bored, you move on to something else. But the joke amongst us Old School RuneScape players is you don't quit this game. You come back. You always come back. When people Nintendo, like you and me dude. say that modern they can't, gaming sucks, they just can't make a good Pokemon game. I, I played the last one on Switch. Uh, it wasn't Sword and Shield. It was after that. Uh, the most recent one. I can't. Uh, Violet and Scarlet. Is that what they were called? It sucked. It was boring. It was so boring. I. It was. People keep making these kids games that were for kids in the 1990s, 
and now they're not making them for adults, and it drives me bonkers. Kingdom Hearts 3 should have been made for adults because the only people who played Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 were kids in the 90s and 2000s, and now they're all adults. Why did you make a game where I went through Frozen and I didn't get to go and see all the stuff that I wanted to see from before? Take me back to Nightmare Before Christmas, take me back to The Lion King, Toy Story was cool, but come on, make the game for adults. It's, that's, who, that's who's playing it. We aren't levying that statement towards games like Power World or Helldivers or Lethal Company. I also got no, two different No, Modern Gaming Sucks too. is directed solely to the majority of AAA companies. Yeah. And some might say, why do you even care about AAA games? Just ignore them then. Well, and I because that's the peak of the industry, right? You, It's very frustrating that games are being made for this super broad audience by these enormous companies, and the things that they create end up leaking into other games. Um, Blizzard is a great example of that. Now acquired, or first acquired by Activision, now acquired by Microsoft. Triple A things are going to bleed over into the games that we thick and thin gamers really love. You're going to start seeing this stuff happen if you want the quality of it to go up. I'm a big believer in the idea that as your your resources grow, so does your creativity. But in a world where your your creative your creative project is made solely to grow resources, the things that sneak into these games is abhorrent. I agree. I've been doing that for quite a while now. Yeah, I don't but play AAA games. AAA I will are... never spend seventy dollars on a video game all at once. <laughs> I will. I will have a bad night and microtransaction a couple times. Publishers but, you know, have some amazing IPs. Spend a few hundred on games. I just want to see more of from very passionate developers. Elder Scrolls and Fallout. Yeah. Two great IPs it's so unfortunate, that are man. currently in the wrong hands at yeah. modern day Bethesda. I mean, I haven't played Starfield yet, so take this with a grain of salt. But it's alarming that a company that put out a video game that didn't win any awards and wasn't thought of as being a very good video game is going to make the next installment of two of the greatest franchises of all time. Now, I do like Elder Scrolls Online. I have played a decent amount of it. As far as MMOs go, though, it's kind of lackluster, and I don't see any reason to put in a large amount of time into it. They're not very good at keeping me entertained, but I did enjoy it. I like roaming that world. I like that it's the biggest Elder Scrolls world of that quality. I enjoy that, but I'm worried about Elder Scrolls VI. I don't know if it's ever going to come out, and if it does, I don't know that it's going to be any good. I'm going to play it. I might, I might spend seventy dollars on that. I might spend a hundred dollars on that game if if it costs a hundred dollars, which it probably will by then. After they continually brag about Starfield and the numerous devs always defending the game design at every turn, I'm not expecting any future Bethesda things. games to be anything but disappointing. Ubisoft owns Splinter Cell, Call of Juarez, Brothers in Arms, so many other franchises but they either ignore them completely or they turn them into modern gaming slop. Insanely loved franchises too. Brothers of Arms was a huge game for people back in the day. Saints Row, Twisted Metal, Deus Ex, Infamous, yeah. Thief. I liked the last Deus Ex. It wasn't the best Deus Ex, but I liked it. I enjoyed playing through it. I didn't kill a single enemy. I stealthed my way through that entire game, and I, I really enjoyed it. I, I liked solving the puzzles. I liked the quest lines. The one where the girl has a chip in her brain that made her a serial killer. Super cool. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of franchises that, that should really be brought forward. Saints Twisted Row. Metal, Saints Row. I was literally saying to someone the other day how Saints Row is, is Grand Theft Auto if Grand Theft Auto was extra cheesy. Franchises have been either abandoned or butchered. The thing about these games right here is that they were made by devs that are real gamers. Yeah. Devs that made... Oh, that's such a good point. What? <laughs> The people who make video games, I think about this all the time, the people who made video games in the past, the people who were really good at making video games, really, really understood games. They grew up playing D&D, &D, they grew up playing tabletop games, they grew up playing uh, text-based games, times where you really had to enjoy games to be a gamer. And the only reason you were making games, because there wasn't a whole lot of money in them, was because you wanted to make a game that was better than the ones that were out there already. So you were very driven and you were also very knowledgeable of the systems at play here. 
Those games, while they're dated now, had incredible systems. Dungeons and Dragons was popular because it was a well thought out, well fleshed out game system. And game systems are difficult to understand. And a lot of the people who are getting into making video games now, a lot of the people working at these big companies are doing it for the paycheck, which is fine, but it's, but it's the fact. They're not here because they love games. They're not sinking 10,000 hours into RuneScape or Path of Exile. They are going to a two-year Full Sail Academy uh, game video production course, and they're getting out and they're going into video games because they played Call of Duty when they were kids. And no offense to people who play Call of Duty, it's a fine game. Who didn't enjoy playing zombies as a kid? But... It's not the most creative thing in the world. And so when your entire think tank is just filled with people who that's their standard of gaming, you're not going to get something really, really amazing out of it. You're going to get something that's like everything else. Made games they would want to play themselves. And most of the people who are really good at games or who love games, really love games, are making their own video Devs games. Devs that are passionate about what they're making and have a real understanding of game design. They aren't scared to make a game that isn't for everyone. Yeah, totally. Because all games can't Fuck be for everyone. And this is one of the biggest reasons why AAA is failing right now. They try to appeal to the to largest the broad audience market. as possible. Yep. The games end up having no identity, yep. no real strengths. Like every They're other so game. That because they always... if you already know how to play the game, if you've played it a thousand times, you can jump right into this one. And now that's fine. I am frustrated sometimes by the fact that every game needs 40 hours out of you before it gets fun. In order to play League, you've got a lot of learning to do. In order to play RuneScape, you've got a lot of learning to do. I do find it as an investment into my hobby, though, to learn a bunch of different kinds of games. Get good at, at, at Apex. Get good at League. Get good at MMOs. Get good at um, strategy games like Civ. Get good at... Um, survival games like Rust get good at these systems so that when when games that come out that inevitably start merging all of these systems you sort of have a less steep learning curve everyone wants to get to the end really quickly everybody wants to get the power really fast no one wants to work for it but the problem is, is that when that happens, you don't have any sense of accomplishment. You're not really doing anything. That's why people are so bored of video games right now, is because they're playing a bunch of games where they're not any different. You don't have to learn anything. There's nothing that tests you. You need to push yourself in things. If you only play one type of game, play another type of game. And, and, and know that it's going to be a chore. You're going to have to show up. It's, it's as much of a grind as anything else. Gaming isn't always fun. But it can be really rewarding, and you can learn a lot from it. Just come out feeling like every we gotta other... stop thinking about it as just entertainment. It's not entertainment. It's the same way that movies aren't entertainment for people who really love movies. They are entertainment sometimes, but most of the time, it's about challenging yourself. Milk toast triple A game. I know that's a, a a difficult and touchy subject for people, but it's true. I promise. And it's ended up being a reason many fans are pushed away. We make games we want to play. It sounds a little too much. Like it's just like gatekeeping for bald middle-aged white guys like me. This right here is just another corny ass bullshit pandering statement that has led to the mentality that's killing the leadership at AAA Studios right now. Where did this mindset get you, Justin? Record low player counts for Destiny 2 Ooh. in a fan base that is expecting- Destiny 2 should have been such a home run. Demise. Destiny should have been a home run. But what does this dude care? He got promoted at this company yeah. after giving this GDC presentation. Well, people who make money get promoted at companies, not people who are talented. Steve Jobs is a hero for me. I love Steve Jobs, but let's be honest, Steve Jobs wasn't the person who who created the products at Apple. And Steve would have told you that. Steve would have I heard that quote from Steve one time where he said, "The problem with a company is that the bozos who sell things are the ones who make money for the company, so they get promoted. And then when they get promoted, they don't know how to make anything, and all they care about is the bottom line, so they snuff out creativity and they move the people who are actually talented out of the company." And that's what's happening. Which should tell you everything you need to know about current AAA gaming. And again, I have to reiterate, we make games we want to play is the type of philosophy that leads to successes like Baldur's Gate yes. 3, Helldivers 2, Power totally. World, Lethal Company, I haven't and played so Baldur's many Gate 3 either. It looks really good. So to any and all game developers out there pricey. that may be listening to this, have this quote hanging on your wall and design your games with it in mind. Yeah.
So AAA gaming is dead. Make it unbelievably fun. But make it fun. Make it fun forever. That's the secret. Make it fun forever. Make it fun from the beginning to the end. Make people excited. The first time you log into RuneScape, there is so much to discover. If you play that game, not like you're trying to follow a meta, not like you're trying to follow a guide to the end of it, you play that game like you're going around and talking to everybody, it'll blow your mind. I remember being a child, stumbling into a haunted mansion, figuring out that there was a guy who got turned into a chicken and that I had to figure out how to turn him back. And I didn't have a guide. I was going around trying to figure out everything by myself and it was amazing. I can still tell you how to beat that quest. I can still tell you all the steps that go on in it. I can draw you a map of RuneScape because of that. Not because I followed a guide. Not because I was trying to be something in it. I just wanted to explore it. That's what games did. That's what they should do. It should feel like you're in another world. The, the whole, the thing that we're trying to do with video games is escape into something that feels like what we have in real life, but way better and more exciting. I want to cast spells and wear suits of armor. I don't want to work a nine to five job. I want you to create a world that is compelling where I can do those things forever. I know that's a bit of a hyperbolic statement and I'm going to back it up with some data in a minute, but first let's dive a little bit deeper into the success of games like Pow World and Helldivers 2. What about these games in Power particular World huge have done dopamine. so well that they're maintaining such high player counts and exploding? I'm glad let's Power World is still Power doing World. well. Pow World is Pokemon meets Minecraft meets Breath of the Wild, and the way they were able to blend elements from all those games and still come out creating something that can stand on it. And that's the thing. I was playing Power World with Tiff, and by the time she was level 12, I was level 38. And I was level 38 by the time she was level 12 because I had played all of those games already. I already knew what to do. I understood the concepts at play. I was going hard and going fast. And I wasn't following a guide. I was, I was exploring. I was doing everything. I was running around and catching every monster that I hadn't caught yet, up to 5 or 10 or whatever it was to keep getting your XP boost. I was making sure to get every single new resource that I came across. Anytime I found a dungeon or something, I would mark it down mentally if I couldn't do it right then, and I would come back to it. I made sure that I figured out what was going on immediately. Its own two legs, as its own real thing, is an impressive feat alone. But one of the biggest strengths with the game that I recognized pretty quickly is that it's a game that has a respectable grind. It's totally. incredibly well balanced. Every game session on Power World, you always feel like you're making progress, always discovering something new, and or doing some epic base building. In all my playtime so far across several servers, I've yet to get bored or feel like something is a slog. I feel like I've never played online with it, I really should. Which for a survival game, a genre I'm not usually a huge fan of because nah. of long grinds. Yeah. I have to say that Well, one of the things that I hate about Rust is that if you're playing on a public server, you end up getting wiped constantly. And server wipes are good, but it sucks trying to find a server that says that, oh, we wipe every third Tuesday of the month or whatever, and it's the first Monday, and you think, oh great, I have plenty of time, and then the next day it wipes. And I'm like, oh well actually we changed it and the world has that's really annoying. A perfect balance in my eyes. And if you aren't comfortable with the base level grind, then Pocket Pair allows you to tweak a whole bunch of settings in your game world to adjust XP That's levels, really cool. death penalties, and a whole lot of other shit. I didn't know that you could do and that. I really applaud them for having all these options for the player. Now that's a few big reasons I think the game is successful, but the next biggest is the PALs themselves. There's been a lot of work put into the PALs, having unique attacks and abilities, yeah, totally. and even designs, even if they are very similar. It's like Digimon meets Pokemon meets Monster Rancher. A lot of people just call it Pokemon, but with guns, but really, it, at its heart, it's a it's a, a monster-raising simulator, and I love monster-raising games. Digimon World 1 was a huge, huge imprint on me as a child. Monster Rancher was a huge, huge imprint on me as a child. And then, as I got a little bit older and got into my teen years, I discovered Monster Hunter and and this game just strikes all of those things. It found a group of people 
and it served them so well. Digimon isn't making games like that anymore. Bandai isn't, isn't able to make a game that's as niche as Digimon World 1 was, but that game was groundbreaking. The ability to run around with these monsters that have these really complicated evolution trees where you have to get all these different stats built up, and the way to build those stats up is a little bit confusing and cryptic, and you have to take care of your monster and feed them, and you have to find new ways to expand the farm and do all these quests. Man, I could talk about quests forever, but... If they don't do that anymore because that takes time. People don't want to have to restart a game anymore. But when I was young, you would restart your games constantly. You have to redo stuff constantly. And I know that we have less and less time, but if you stop thinking of it as, I need to beat this game in three weeks because the next most popular game is going to come out in three weeks, then you can start going, what if I just play this game for a year? What if I really like this game and I just want to spend all of my time in this game? I know there's not like clout in that, but isn't isn't that what we're trying to do is have fun and enjoy things? It's a video game, you know? To Pokemon. Get good it's at it. It's fun them. to fight them. It's fun to catch Without them. Without watching a guy. And it's fun to ride them around and blow shit up. I've created more meaningful relationships with my pals and pal world than I have in any of the recent Pokemon games. There's just so many ways to interact with the pals, and it's lent to some real sense of bonding totally. with these characters. And lastly, the price of the game is $30. And it's also on Game Pass. Uh, Plus, the game preview no is on Game Pass. I don't know if it's actually on Game Pass. Passes. It's just a damn good game yeah. for 30 bucks. Now the only downside right now is the bugs. Pathing for the pals, server instability especially on the Xbox consoles, and map glitches that lead you to potentially getting Man, stuck. Man, this looks really good. I might have to get back into Power World. Basic bugs, I see no reason why I won't be able to stick with this game for years to come. Now let's take a look at Helldivers 2. All Helldivers right. 2 is I what I would say one. is a true cinematic gaming experience. It looks incredible. This. I enjoyed God of War. That was the first AAA game I had played in a long time that I thought was fun. I thought the combat was good. The exploration was okay. The storytelling was decent. But the combat was fun. I enjoyed throwing my axe and pulling it back and, and blocking people, parrying. I, I was big into Dark Souls at the time. So when I, I got a hold of this, I had a good time with it. But I do I do know what they mean. I haven't done any of this, by the no, way. No, this is, just so you at home know... We haven't touched the controller for 45 minutes. <laughs> or this. Is this how you get your sick kicks? What? It's just an ordinary crabby. Oh my goodness! No, this cinematic game. <laughs> I haven't played Final Fantasy 16 either. I want to. Um, but I feel like Final Fantasy's in a bad situation right now. Come on. Come on. It's my doggy Bimo. I feel like Final Fantasy has been putting out half-finished games lately. Final Fantasy 15 was amazing, but it wasn't finished. There wasn't enough to do in it. it. It ended as quickly as it started. I put maybe 20 hours into Final Fantasy 15, and it was over. And I was so heartbroken. I was. I felt like when Final Fantasy 15 ended, I was just getting started on on really loving it. And I would still recommend Final Fantasy XV as the Final Fantasy game to someone who has never played a Final Fantasy game. I think it's a lot of fun and tells a great story. But the problem is that it's just not all in the video game. I, Final Fantasy VII was 100 hours? I don't know if that's true. Let me look that up real quick before I, before I tell a lie on myself here. Uh, uh, Final Fantasy VII Playtime. 86 and a half hours for 100% completion, 36 and a half hours for the main objective. Okay, fair enough. Maybe I wasn't very good at that game. But still, there was so much, there are so many plot twists and so many plot points in that game versus I feel like there was less than 10 plot points in Final Fantasy 15. I mean, you get in a car with your friends, your car breaks down, you try to get on the boat, but you can't get on the boat because your town is being invaded or whatever. And then you, you go back out, you get your car fixed, you drive to the other city, you get there, you have to go mess with Titan. After that, the people pick you up, the bad guys pick you up, you go and invade that bad guy base, and then your people get blinded or whatever, then we time skip, and then it's the end of the game. Gameplay is happening in the gameplay. The explosions that light up your screen, Man, the impact awesome. of your weapons, the ragdoll physics, that's so the cool. intensity of the gameplay. There's not much the game doesn't do right in regards to immersion. And this is like totally online, right? Drawing in point for me to finally purchase the game, the cinematic gameplay. 
Second is the simple yet enjoyable progression systems. Simple currencies to use in unlocking more upgrades. From weapons to stratagems to cosmetics, there's a lot to work towards. After spending some time with the game myself, I would describe the game like The Division's Dark Zone mixed with the OG Star Wars Battlefront game. I was literally thinking it looked like Star Wars Battlefront, the original ones, totally. Which is perfect for me because I love both oh, those, those things. Those games are so good. I, I had so many sleepovers when we just played Star Wars Battlefront. The only thing that could hold this game back a bit is the repetitiveness. Most of the missions are a little too similar. Maybe I'm just not high enough of a level yet. But I can see the I game see getting that. a little bit Content's difficult time, for low budget uh, creators. Too, but only time will tell. So, AAA gaming is dead. It's time to finally back up that statement. Let's first take a look at the budgets for AAA games. Uh, give it to Spider -Man me. Spider-Man 2, 300... 300 million dollars. For a game that was a reskin of the first game. 15 million dollars. Starfield, 200 million. Cyberpunk, 360... You've got to think with these games, though, they're, they're creating... They're creating movies... And now some of these games, now Cyberpunk I've heard really good things about, and I really want to play Cyberpunk. I was so excited for Cyberpunk when it was first coming out, and I was another game where I was heartbroken. I felt like something had been taken away from me when I discovered that Cyberpunk 2077 was basically unplayable in PlayStation. They ended up pulling it off of PlayStation, because that's all I had at the time. And just what a disappointment. So now I'm really excited to actually play it. It looks so good. That first trailer where you go in and you give the chip to the guy and then he pulls the shotgun on you and you, you know, shoot him with a gun or whatever. That looks so amazing that I was so hyped for the game. 16 million for the base game and 125 million more for Phantom Liberty and the 2.0 update. Marvel Avengers, 170 million. Suicide Squad figures are unknown, but it took seven years of development, so we can also guess it's somewhere in the hundreds of millions. It's crazy. A lot these of Sony first-party well. titles also have very similar budgets, and this kind of spending is unsustainable and, frankly, unnecessary. A lot totally. of these game studios have excessive bloat and spending with inflated developer counts. A lot of money being invested into areas of the. I mean, this is that thing, right? Where whenever you're making a game completely from scratch, and this is something that Power World really got. Um, a lot of flack for is that they were using assets that were pre-created and a lot of those assets uh, people weren't happy that they were not as creative as they could have been but something has to give if you have a low budget and you're an indie developer and you don't have a team of people an entire team 100 plus people who are just working on textures you're going to have to outsource your work you can't do all that yourself without it taking decades it's just not possible. Stardew Valley was made by one person, and it took him a really, really long time. Stardew Valley is an amazing game, but it's not Power World. It's not a three-dimensional, open-world, super expansive, uh, tons of things to do with all these intricate systems. It's not that. It's it's a different thing, and it still took him a really long time to do. So you have to think about that when you're when you're being angry at these games. The game that don't actually matter. And somehow these games often have less depth and creativity than they used to. Yeah. It seems because like one guy is still in charge of it. It's still a game director who just happened to get boosted up at a really big company. Budget is going to Polygon counts and hiring BlackRock funded companies like Sweet Baby yeah. Inc. to inject social politics into every aspect of the game. That's it's very crazy. similar to the to look current into this. Hollywood movie world. Now some of these modern AAA games are profitable, but a lot of them aren't. And we've seen a lot of studio closures, games being canceled after years of development, or downsizing in order to cut costs. Hell, some companies are only staying afloat thanks to their egregious monetization Microtransactions, practices. yeah. But as highlighted by the first half of this video... I do think it's a really interesting thing, the way that people care so much about their microtransactions. I am of the belief, and I feel that if you've bought something with real money, it's no longer a flex on me. I only care about things that you've earned through playing the game an obscene amount. If you're really, really good at the game and you have a bunch of stuff that I've never seen before, this goes back to RuneScape again, it, I, I found it amazing when you would see someone wearing something that you knew that you could only get if you did X, Y, Z. The first time I saw a crystal shield or a crystal bow, I was blown away by it. And then I asked, well, how do I get that? And they said, oh, it's from this quest. Uh, was it Regicide or was it Roving Elves? Whichever one it was. And I thought, well, how, how do I do that quest? So you would look up the requirements of that quest, and you thought, oh my gosh, I, I don't think I'll ever be able to do that. And that item became important to you, not only because it looked cool, but because you knew that it would be really, really difficult for you to get. And only people who had it were people who were at a whole different level of gaming than you were. Video 
A lot of the most profitable and most played games right now are games from companies who are either indie, double A, or from software. <laughs> Dev teams focused on making yeah. good games for players, and the players are responding accordingly, rewarding these devs for being gamer first. So could we be looking at another gaming industry crash, at least in the AAA space? Well, according to CD Projekt Red's Powell Sasko, who worked as the quest director for Cyberpunk, and Mike Laidlaw, who was the lead designer wow. of Bioware for the Dragon Age series, they Big believe names. a crash is coming. Even Powell mm -hmm. said in a recent interview, when it comes to AAA, we are just running at a wall, I think. And we're gonna Yeah, I, I think that the idea of trying to farm something that is really elusive is an odd one to me. I don't think that you get I don't think that you get something special from forcing people into a mold. I don't think that you get something really special from using a formula. I think you get something really special from somebody who you never expected to put together this thing and they have. I think that the guy who has a the guy or girl or person whatever who has a really interesting background that that is unlikely is the person who's going to put together in their brain a really groundbreaking thing. And usually those things are really simple, but they're just looked at from an angle that that no one expected it to be looked at from. And this isn't something that you can force. Anyone who's ever been told, well, you just need, you just need to be creative, think out of the box. Anyone who's ever actively tried to think out of the box knows that it's a, a pathway to cringe, that trying to be edgy or different or whatever doesn't work. You have to be that person. And companies don't want to hire that person usually because that person might be late to work. They might be difficult to work with. I mean, look at, look at, um, what's his face from id software oh come on you know you know the guys the the two i can't remember their names mike mark what i can't why can't i remember their names anyways those guys are are well known as being somewhat difficult to work with but they broke boundaries and did insane things because of who they were as people and i think that that's like what you need when you're trying to create something special if you want super easy to work with, vanilla, button-up shirt, plain Jane people in your environment, while that's easier for you to handle, you're going to get button-up shirt, plain Jane, vanilla games. That's what they make. Or art. I mean, it's the same thing with musicians. If you try to get musicians to behave themselves, you will not get good music. That's just the way that it is. Taylor Swift is is out here doing wild shit, using a private jet to fly back and forth, having all these relationship problems, all that stuff. That's what makes her a good musician, be a good musician because her brain is wired that way. It's not something put on. Same thing with that guy from the 1975. He keeps pissing people off because that's who he is. That's why you like his music because he's that way. Is it the the greatest way to behave? Is it the most healthy thing and, and and like a role model for you to follow probably not but that's why the music is good we're gonna crash on that wall really soon we're looking at studios with overinflated dev counts overspending mismanagement esg and dei incompetence and insatiable greed from top level executives that is blinding them with every decision they're making i fully agree with the idea of a triple a gaming crash coming totally. within the next few years so is AAA gaming well, I think, dead? I think we're having a gaming crash of the player base, too. I think that these super inflated numbers of game players are going down because, like I said, a lot of people who didn't grow up with video games and they weren't a super important part of their life got into gaming over the past few years. And a lot of those people, as other things come up in their life, they're going to be more interested in them. Whenever someone tells me, oh, I just don't have time for games, dude. I just, you know, I love playing games, but other things are just more important. i got to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm working my job really. i got to make sure that I'm going to the gym. I got to make sure, brother, playing video games is a priority for me. I want to make sure that my life is set up in a way to where I can always play games. I'm really busy right now and I'm screen sharing RuneScape AFK style to my phone so that I can click on it every 20 minutes to make sure I stay logged in because I need to be playing video games. I love them 
like nothing else in my life. It is my favorite hobby to a degree. I can't think of a single other thing that I've done with more hours in my life than play video games. It's really important to me. And if you don't feel that way about video games, then you probably won't stick with it for a really long time. That's totally fine. There's nothing that says that you have to be a super dedicated gamer, but some of us are. And those of us who are, are going to be here playing games until we die. Officially, no, but the end might not be too far off. And in the eyes of many of us, AAA is dead to us already. And yeah. many of us have only focused on the indie and AA scene over the last few years. Or we just go back and play older AAA games. For example, after Skull and Bones flopped, people have been going back to Assassin's Creed Black Flag. After Suicide Squad flopped, the Batman Arkham games rose back up in popularity Straight up. and are already beating Suicide Squad in player counts. After Starfield flopped for me, I went... I, I can already see it happening, that the Xbox 360 era is starting to become a golden era of gaming. People are already looking back at it and saying, instead of buying an Xbox... What's the new Xbox? Series X? Or a PlayStation 5? Or getting an updated PC? Just go buy an Xbox 360. The games are dirt cheap. The consoles are dirt cheap. The games are amazing. And I agree with that. You can play Skyrim on there. You can play Elder Scrolls Oblivion on there. You can play Morrowind on an Xbox 360 because it's backwards compatible. You can play... Um, oh my gosh, just so many good games. <laughs> you can play all the Call of Duties that were amazing. Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops were both on there. You can. There's just so much gaming. The original Assassin's Creed, um, a lot of really good RPGs like uh, Lost Odyssey is, are on there. Uh, it's, it's just, it's a console that was amazing. And you can definitely see that people are now starting to recognize that that was a golden era. And we've sort of been in the same slump ever since PS4. Xbox One and PS4 introduced this new sort of, oh, everything is going to start becoming homogenized and there's not going to be a lot of creativity, and we've been in that. There hasn't been a jump from PS4 to PS5. I got the PS5 and I appreciate the new loading time or the better loading times and I appreciate the updated graphics and everything runs a lot smoother and that's that's super nice, but it's not really any different than PS4. I'm playing the same kind of games that I was playing on there. It wasn't a jump. Went and dropped 30 hours in Skyrim in just over a week. Even casual gamers who don't interact much online about games are voting with their wallets. Yeah. They too just want good games made for gamers by gamers. And that's really what this video and a lot of my videos always boil down to. Games developed by passionate gamers that have a fundamental understanding of what makes gaming fun and entertaining is who I'm looking to buy from. And this is what totally. the Helldivers 2 team really understands right now. They have nailed such a good core gameplay loop that despite the game lacking a bit more depth, it keeps players coming back and saying, just one more mission. Yeah. How about another one? And those are the best games. The games where you can get a group of friends on board with it, and they're so good that you don't want to quit playing. That it's three in the morning, your friend has to be up at eight to go to work, and he's still just saying, another one. That's what everyone wants. We want a good time. We want it to feel effortless. Because as I said earlier, sometimes playing games isn't effortless. Sometimes it takes a lot of mental fortitude to be able to log in and put in the hours to get better because it can be difficult and it can be challenging. So when a game feels so good that you just want to continue playing and that's all you can think about, man, that's something special. Good video from November Hotel. Give it a like. Subscribe to him if you haven't already. That was good. I, uh, I love gaming, and I think a lot of us love gaming, and and it's sad to see the state that things are in, but I think that there's hope in the future for sure, and there's always great games that have been around for a long time that you can still play. There's a lot of thriving communities out there for games that you haven't touched in a long time, and don't be afraid to go back and try something that, that you always wished you would have played. That's the way World of Warcraft was for me. I had always wished that I played World of Warcraft when I was younger, and I finally got to live out that dream as an adult, and it was really, really worth my time. So don't be afraid of it.